Hello? All right. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Benjamin Bryant, and this presentation is just go three months in. So as a short background, um, I recently graduated back in July 2018, and I'd never actually heard of the Go language. And in August, I got invited to, I think it was GoForCon London, uh, well, not to the actual thing, just to the pre-drinks for it with a friend. And at the time, I thought it was like a conference for like the animal of gophers. And so I was like really hyped. And then when I went there, it was just like programming. And I was kind of disappointed because I was on the holiday. And then um, two weeks after that, I got um, invited to check out the Pivotal offices with my friend there. And then people started walking in, and I started recognizing them, and it was gophers again. And like, it's like I'd been tricked twice. But this time, something else happened, because Nicholas, um, who had just done his talk, uh, he was doing his first ever talk there. And at the very end of that talk, he was presented with a t-shirt. And after that, uh, Dominic said that, um, new speakers are always welcome. So I assumed that if I learned the programming language and then also did a talk, I'd get a free t-shirt. And that's why I'm here. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, I found out two months later this isn't the case, but I'd already gone too far. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> And so my plan is to talk about my first small, tiny Go project and about the list of mistakes I learned along the way and things that I also encountered while, while learning Go. And just to showcase my thoughts and feelings and everything and maybe show to people who are in the audience and haven't tried that maybe with like an hour a day, you know, life as a gopher might not be so far away, you know? And so part one, the idea. Because people who use Go are called gophers, I figured, and Go's about concurrency, I figured why not model the life of one million gophers concurrently inside the language? And so I went um, and found out some facts about gophers just to see what they're like. And I'm gonna be honest, you guys have grossly misrepresented the gopher animal. They, are, they do not work together. They are very seclusive, but you know, whatever. And so how do you get started? Well. First step, how do I even create a program in Go? Like, um, when I suggested I wanted to do a talk, I hadn't actually installed it. And so, <laughs> and so um, first step is uh, well, creating a Hello World program and completing the Go tour. So progress checklist one. With these three steps, we're already like three steps of the way to becoming a professional Go developer. These are three steps more than someone who hasn't even taken three steps. So like, I'm like miles ahead at this point. <laughs> so part two, modeling the life of 10 gophers, because you've got to start small. I just started making a strut, and then like, um, it all just kind of modeled the life of a gopher. I figured, well, life is kind of like a go routine. It starts, and then it ends, and that's it. And so um, that's kind of what I did. So I just made a live method, did a for loop for like 100,000 loops, and then I just ran it. And then this happened. Like, they came, some came to life, and then some died. And I was like, hang on, this, this looks, they should all come to life at the same time and die at the same time. Because it turns out I didn't really understand concurrency very well. But it's okay, because I, I, I did some slight tweaks. And instead of like doing like the whole life, just do like a little slice of life. Like maybe just like one frame of their existence. That part can be concurrent. And then you just go on and go on. And then uh, that picture is not in the right place. But... <laughs> Oh, well, it wasn't important. And so, <laughs> and so um, we had a point where the gopher, well, all the gophers were coming to a life and then dying, sadly. But it's OK, because they're not real. And so we've reached progress checklist part two. So I went and watched Rob, Rob Pike's Concurrency is Not Parallelism. It's a really good talk to help you understand what concurrency is, because I didn't. And then um, I also learned about some other stuff. I learned GoPap is a thing, but apparently now it's not. But I'd already written this slide. And so, <laughs> and so, and so part three, there's more to life than this, right? Of, well, of course there's more to life. I added more things for gophers to do, you know? They want to walk around. They want to find food. They want to eat food. They want to find, you know, other gophers, settle down, have kids. And so um, I also made a little world so that they could explore a tiny bit, you know, like a 2D map and just so they could walk around and like do all that kind of stuff. 
And essentially, it was very difficult to visualize what I was doing. And so um, I found like a nice little HTML. It was already built into the Go language. You could just go make some HTML packages and then just like put it on the screen. And so it was time for the Go for Life Alpha. And so on the, uh, hopefully you can see it. Like um, the little Gs, they're like gophers. And then um, the uh, exclamation marks are carrots and the slashes is grass. And so they're just walking around, you know, going to try and find their little carrots and eating them. And that's basically it. And so it was time to move on to part two, reproduction. And so now they just came together. <laughs> and, now, and so after, um, you know, we had a little bit of a performance problem. They were, they were very good at reproducing. And so, <laughs> and, and so once we reached this kind of little problem here, like that's actually a GIF, it's not a still image. Like the performance was really, really bad. And so, but it's okay, we're on progress checklist three. It's time to move on to part four, optimization. So at 4.4754% of my target goal, it was taking around half a second. And I did the math on that one. And so, if you move on, I basically made these little test parameters. So um, the world size was gonna be 3,000 by 3,000. The, num the initial number of gophers was gonna be 5,000. And how long, and I had to time how long it would take to get X many numbers in a minute and how long it would take to reach a million. Now, before I moved on to like, um, I, I should probably say like the current algorithm they are using to find food, it's just like a spiral search. And so like you start here, and then you go here and then try and find like the nearest point. And so that was going way too slow, obviously. So I decided to maybe try and look into spatial partitioning because it was seemed like an interesting thing to check out. And so I'm gonna walk over here and deny those guys anything. But um, essentially, you see these little orange dots here. What spatial partitioning is, is that you have this, you split it into little grids here, and each of these grids knows what's inside of it. So if you query this area, you can very quickly find what's around you. And also in terms of like um, concurrency, because these are all little separate different boxes, when like a gopher in position zero, zero, and a, a gopher in position like 3,000, 3,000, when one was trying to move, like this one would like, it had to be, had to be done sequentially. Like you could, you could, you could concurrently read but you couldn't concurrently read and write. So all my writes had to be done in order. And so if I split it up into different boxes, then I could essentially have these little different parts, uh, I'm gonna shuffle over here, um, have these different parts be done in a concurrent format. But unfortunately, it was less efficient by a lot. Like uh, it was taking like ages upon ages to even get to where I was before. So I decided to try and figure out how to benchmark things. And once again, Go already had tooling for that. So I essentially just went looking through everything to try and find where the problem was. And it was actually this method here because I am misunderstood how Go maps work. And maps in Go, essentially, they require something that is comparable inside of it. And when I looked up how to like compare a strut, I because of my leading question to Google, I got an answer that I needed to essentially create either a string or an int in order to get, well, put it inside a map. But it turns out that um, as long as all the values inside of a struct are comparable, then that means that you can, well, all the fields inside the struct are comparable, then that means that you can use as a map. But unfortunately, I found that out yesterday. So I, <laughs> I, um, I switched using a two-dimensional map because in comparison to the 213 nanoseconds that this method being called all over, like every single time I needed to find a coordinate in a map, I was calling this method. Like when you blew it up to around a million, it was just adding up insanely. Whereas now it was just 0 0.51 nanoseconds every single time I wanted to call something and it was just much faster. And the results of the, well, it was still less efficient, basically, because, and the reason for that is just my misunderstanding of spatial partitioning. Since the slides that I showed before, everything was kind of spaced out. But as I mentioned earlier, with a 3,000 by 3,000 grid, that's only around 9 million different spaces, and there was 1 million food inside the test parameters, which meant that every one in nine space had what a gopher was looking for. So spiral search was already fast, essentially. It was already like what I needed. So I just went back in time and took the information that I took, that I gained from the future and applied it to the past and using, <laughs> and using, the, using the exact same uh, 
code from before, it was the average processing time was only 100 milliseconds at the same amount of uh, gophers from before when it was almost half a second. And so now this GIF has started like already at the end, but in short, I went, I tried to go for the million essentially, and I did it in around like nine minutes, 30 seconds. It reset, but spoiler alert, it happens. And so this was uh, the end of my problem four checklist. So I ticked everything off and that was okay. And I was like, okay, and this is kind of a good place to end everything. And so I made a little final checklist as a sort of like where I first started three months ago, I have, all this stuff, and I feel with like this much experience, you might be able to help build a bank. I don't know, but um, <laughs> and so, and so, <laughs> but unfortunately, um, because they wanted to do like newcomer talks, like um, sort of one after the other, I was placed in March, and this talk was done back in like November, December time. So I had three months of nothing, so I just made another talk called Go Three More Months, three more months In. <laughs> and so part one, the idea, you'll notice, you know, <laughs> I still hadn't quite figured out like um, the secret mysteries between partition grid search versus spiral search. I mean, I figured out that because there was so much food, that's what was causing it to be slower. So what if I reduce the number of foods. So I needed some kind of way to have like two different worlds at the same time, which is what part two is about, modeling the design of two worlds. And as you'll notice, I'm kind of using the same slides as I, I was before and like changing it slightly, a bit how like interfaces work, which is kind of what this whole part was about. Now, this is my first interface, and anyone who's like a seasoned Go developer might be having heart attacks right now, but I assure you, this seemed like a good idea at the time. And, so, and I, it wasn't, like I was, it was, I had like two different tile maps, and I was just copying code from one place to another place, and it was like, I spent so much time on it, and I was like, I'm clearly, this is clearly wrong, but I don't know what's right, so I have to keep going. And um, uh, so in January, I went to a go for meetup again, and I sort of asked, like, what do I do about large interfaces? And they were like, large interfaces? I thought we were using small interfaces. And I was like, small interfaces? What's that? <laughs> and, then they were like, and then they were like, it's an interface that's small. Wow, I, like, I, I, I just learned so much because I, 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 like, I unlock the power to Google the correct answer, which, which is basically what these smaller interfaces are about. I'm gonna shuffle over here. And so, and so um, here you'll see I had like a scroller, a clicker, and a key pressure. And so all these interfaces could actually be like, com is the word composizized? Composite? Composed, that's a good one. Composed, <laughs> can be composed together to create another interface. And so with that idea, it enabled me to sort of make different worlds using a similar, well, using similar code. So go for world there, that was um, by just changing like the top two, like searcher and tile container, I was able to sort of change like the search types they were using, like switch from spiral search and then switch to partition search. And then I started trying out different world designs. So part three, there's more to go for life than this, right? Yes, it's time for the go for life 2.0 showcase. Here we go, this is it, dramatic redesign. We have like cubes now, we're using HTML5 canvas, we've upgraded from span tags. We also have like um, a map selection down there, and like you can see, like has a name, the person you're watching now is someone called Jack Otis, like he's not that hungry, he's like, I mean, he's halfway through his life, but that's okay, you won't see the end of it. And then you, you can also change like um, the little forms down there and then reset so you can, like change the settings of the map and see the different, uh, what the, the different, that's not the correct word, but just see how good it is, is the, <laughs> in comparison to your other ones. And, and then I added some like mouse control, you could zoom in and out, you could tab target to different gophers and like spy on their lives. You could also click on the, like click and just move around. And then I just started like marking around with stuff because by just changing like the way color was rendered, I could use the exact same code and make something that looked a bit more artsy. Cause I was like, this looks like fireworks, like that's pretty cool. And then I just made this 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this was. It was. I, I the left one I made by accident. I was like, that looks so cool. It's going in. <laughs> and then um, I moved on to like try collider world. So like on the left is like a horizontal collider. On the right are like diagonal colliders, and they're bouncing into each other. And like these ones are also kind of being rendered concurrently. Just throwing it in there. And then, <laughs> and then I also made uh, elongating go for life. <laughs> Because I just like when you have like one by one pixels, you can pretty much start making a lot of stuff, especially block block revolution. <laughs> <laughs> one of the like the, the hit games, entirely original concept, by the way. And then <laughs> and that was primed for part four optimization. But unfortunately, I didn't optimize it too much. By changing the renderer, it reduced to five minutes, but that doesn't really mean much, unfortunately. Like, I mean, it's, it's all, I, learned, I learned that, you know, changing the DOM is a bit slower than just using Canvas. So just in case anyone was interested, there you go. So progress checklist five, because that was basically just a very extended part five, but like made into something else. And so very short, like we're nearing the end. What I like about Go so far, I feel it helps teach good habits as a programmer. I also like the inbuilt tooling. The community has been pretty cool. Like I've been to, like, as I said, I've been to every single one so far and I've just been like, hey guys, how's it going? And it's actually been kind of cool. The, mas the mascot is cute, which, you know, just throwing that in there. And then anyway, thank you for listening to my talks, the end. <laughs> Questions? Okay, if you want. Oh, right. Yeah, anyone have questions, apparently. Have I checked out Game of Life? As in, like, the... Sure, like, of course. <laughs> you can't say I haven't. You can't say I haven't. <laughs> oh, apparently it's similar to Go for Life, but this is trademark, so I might, you know, I might, I might have to go knock on that game of life's door. <laughs> Any other questions? Up there at the back, I think. What am I going to do in the next three months? Well, <laughs> I actually did have a plan, but like that's spoilers, man. Like. I think it's going to be super lit, though, but don't worry about it. <laughs> More questions? Maybe. <laughs> OK, I mean, OK. Oh, uh, Is the code, the code in the code's GitHub? In um, if I, I don't know how to use your laptop. Oh. I pushed it. Dude. Dude. Yeah, Dude. Dude. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 that's OK, it's OK. It's his laptop. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't. We oh literally, doesn't we, we both have pressed escape. I am witness. We both have, I am witness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, go. Oh, no, basically, it's, it's, in, it's down here. Um, I'll use my keyboard. Okay, I don't use Mac, man. <laughs> okay, I've, I've been outed. I like mouse and keyboard, all right? Like, this is like, Stressful, man. There we go. It's right there in a little tiny link. <laughs> that's that's the GitHub. If you want to check it out, please code review me. It's been six months. You can go. <laughs> but yeah, um, the code's not going to be that great. Um, I, I I did a pull request yesterday. I'm pretty sure it works. Don't worry about it. And um, I'm not going to explain how it works. Just run it and figure it out. You guys are smart. Oh, and we... cool. Really? <laughs> well, yeah. oh, um, Paul asked, um, <laughs> I know his name. Paul asked um, what tips I would have for people who want to do first time speaking. And as a first time speaker, I don't have many tips, but I, I, I guess the, um, no one in the audience wants you to fail, so just go for it, I guess. This is, a, this is a very nice safety net. Like there was like no hecklers, or and they might have tried, but they failed. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, yeah, that that would be it. Like, good job, guys. Go community. Uh, uh, can I? Is this? Are we go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, thank you, Ben. Okay. Give him a cool. round of applause.